With the 2019 AFL season about to be underway, it's time to take a look at each club and pointlessly try to predict how their season will pan out. All of this is speculative, so if you think you know better than we do, be sure to let us know in the comments below. We'll be looking at what the projected best 22 of the team is, player movements, ladder positions, marquee matchups and goals for each team. Today, we take a look at the best 5 win team of all time, the Brisbane Lions. As previously mentioned, the Brisbane Lions 2018 season would have to go down as one of the best 5 win seasons of all time. The young Cubs are an excitement machine, and despite losing 17 games, had almost 90% come the end of the year. This clearly indicates a team losing by small margins, and when you consider their ladder position, a 4 goal average losing margin is quite good. In fact, you have to climb the ladder another 3 positions before you find a team that had a better percentage than the Lions did let alone anything even within 10 percentage points. The off-season saw players like Marcus Adams and Lincoln McCarthy come into the club to help bring some depth and experience to the Lions list, whilst also bringing in the highly coveted Lockie Neal, a player that is sure to dramatically boost the midfield group and help Brisbane's rise back to finals contention, potentially as soon as this year. With the injection of four new draftees as well, the club did lose some players, but only one of which is noteworthy. Dane Beams, who was their captain until partway through the 2018 season, requested a trade back to Collingwood after the passing of his father. It understandably left a sour taste in fans' mouths when only a few weeks prior he had categorically stated that he was not leaving the club, but the anger subsided after the initial emotion was taken out of it. The loss of Beams appears to offset the gaining of Neil. But I would argue that the acquisition of the Fremantle champion outweighs the loss of the Lions' former captain. Beams is now on the wrong side of 30 and has had issues staying on the field in recent years, with short-term injuries impacting him. The added year of development for the young midfield will also benefit greatly from Neil's inside contested work. So what is the goal for the Brisbane Lions in 2019? And what are some realistic expectations for them this year? It's pretty clear that their goal is to return to finals action this year, and it is in all seriousness a possibility for the team. Their younger players have gained more experience and are developing nicely. At the time of writing this script, they have a fairly healthy list, and come into their third year under Chris Fagan. With such a young and rebuilding team, it's typically around the third year that we see a clear game plan developed and actioned by the whole team. We should expect to see fewer lapses in games where they have multiple goals scored against them, and should provide closer contests. I would expect them to at least contend for the finals this year, with a smoky chance of actually getting there, but not making any impact come September. So what changes for the Lions, and how do they go about winning more games to even contend for a finals position? Let's have a look at what we think their best 22 will be, and break down each line. It should be noted that at the time of writing this script, we will not be using any confirmed long-term injured players, so even if a player won't be ready for round 1, they may still make our list. The backline is a fairly solid list of names in its own right, and defensively should halt a lot of deep attacks. Gardner and Andrews are both rising defenders who will probably be top tier in the next year or so, with Andrews already laying down an argument for being there already. Couple them with the on-field leadership and direction of four times Premiership player Luke Hodge, who may let his younger understudies take more control in directing the backline, and the defence of the Lions should become rock solid. The half-back line of great ball users Daniel Rich and Alex Witherden will be bolstered by the acquisition of Marcus Adams, as the two ball users can focus on the counter-attack knowing they will have cover in the form of Adams. I would expect to see both Rich and Witherden begin to utilise more attacking options when transitioning out of defence, as they can rely on the rest of the back line to cover them. It could be argued that the back half line of an AFL team is their most important line, as the majority of attacks are launched from here, while seemingly needing to also stop the opposition before entering the 50 metre arc. The combination of the defensive Adams and attacking Rich and Witherden appears to be a thing of beauty, at least on paper. The centre line perhaps is a bit shaky in my opinion, as Cutler and Cluggage are still developing. 
Zorko is a champion among this team and if he can temper his attitude on the field, his direction as captain could be the turning point in turning his young wingmen into A grade players. It should be noted that the introduction of Neil into the engine room will take a lot of attention away from Zorko and we may see him reach new heights in 2019. I think you could replace Cutler with a couple of other players but now I feel he is their best option here. The half forward line reads as a list of potential future premiership players. Lewis Taylor finally appears to become the player belonging to a rising star winner, Eric Hipwood gets better each year and may still be too young to dominate the competition. And Cameron Rayner had an excellent first year and looks to build his composure a bit more. If Hipwood can at the very least contest the ball and bring it to ground, then the class of both Taylor and Rayner will be on display at ground level. I think the weakest part of this line is Hipwood himself. He looks to be a star of the future based on previous years, but he needs to take the next step in his development. I don't think he will ever be a pack busting forward taking contested marks all day, but he has superb athleticism and should be able to outrun his opponents. If he can get the combination right in when to mark and when to bring the ball to ground, he'll be in contention to earn an All-Australian this year. The forward line is a bit tricky to place. Charlie Cameron will see his midfield time increase this year as his class is too great to limit to the forward line, but there is no doubt his best football is played in front of the big sticks. Daniel McStay can continue his development as a forward and help take some pressure away from Hipwood. His ability to contest the ball in the air should favour his skillful small forwards at his feet as well. Archie Smith is my chosen backup ruckman who is resting in the forward line. His athleticism should bode well as a forward and defenders will be nervous around him as he should be damaging in the air and on the ground. The interchange of McCarthy, Robinson, Christensen and Robertson allows plenty of flexibility across the ground and also injects some roughness into the side. The Lions have what is regarded as a fairly easy draw for 2019 but it remains to be seen how their double up teams will be. The Hawks, North Melbourne and Port Adelaide are expected to at least be competing for a finals position and the Bulldogs and Gold Coast are expected to improve upon their 2018 performances. They host the Pies, Hawks, Demons and Cats at the Gabba which should at least provide them a chance at beating some potential finals contenders. 2019 is a year in which they can finally make their home ground a worry for opposition clubs to attend and their goal should be to win 70-80% to 80 of their home games. If they can do this, as well as pick up 4 or 5 wins when travelling, then the Lions should be a lock to make their first finals appearance in 10 years. More than likely though, I would expect the young Cubs to double their wins from 2018 and finish the year with 10 wins whilst also improving their percentage to over 95%. With that in mind, I expect the Brisbane Lions to finish 2019 in 11th position and really push some finals campaigners to their very best. Do you agree with this preview or is there something you think I missed? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to receive notifications when new content goes live. This has been your AFL Access.